All right, welcoming you to Chair Yoga for the care of Waldenstrom's and whatever else you have going on. We have a lovely spread of folks here live and I'm so grateful to those of you who watch the recordings. Um, we think of you and we hold space for you in this session too. Um, asking some folks, what brought you here today? And kind of drilling down on your why is kind of an important thing for motivation. What keeps you coming back? I want to take care of myself. Why do you want to take care of yourself? Because I want to enjoy being alive. Maybe that's a sort of a, a, a trail that, that leads you here. I want to be able to keep up with my grandkids. Why? Because that brings me joy. Okay, so we want to be in our bodies, enjoy being our bodies, and also perhaps um, find ways to cope with Waldenstrom's symptoms or symptoms from the treatment of Waldenstrom's. Some of us are looking for um, a little bit of movement in a lot of places, some community, getting into a regular routine of yoga, some centering, gentle stretching, breathing. So we'll go ahead and roll out our class now. Let's get started by placing our feet on the earth. And I'm not wearing shoes, but if you want to wear shoes, you're welcome to do so. So I noticed a lot of you just kind of slid to the front of your chair and we're planting the feet on the earth and we might rock the feet gently. So I'm picking up the heels, picking up the toes a few times and connecting with the earth below, letting my feet rest for a moment and feeling my seat in my chair. I might take a breath in here and just sink a little bit into the support that's below me. So taking a breath in through the nose, out through the nose or mouth, here I am. Breathing in, breathing out. Can I let go of effort through my shoulders, through my jaw, throughout the muscles in my face? And can I start my yoga class today with some breathing to warm the insides of my body? Breathing in and breathing out at your own pace. You might sigh it out the mouth if you need a little extra sort of stress management. That's a nice tool for stress management to breathe out of the mouth. See if you could follow the next five breaths in a row. Keeping your focus on the five breaths moving in and out. Maybe you can relax your belly. And just widen out your awareness to the space around you. This is your self-care space for the next little while. We're going to have a shorter class today. So we'll be taking a pause for self-care. All right. And maybe you're ready to blink those eyes open and move the head and neck a little bit. So we'll start by tilting that right ear over to the right shoulder and let both arms be heavy, let both shoulders relax. I'm going to inhale to center. Exhale, left ear, left shoulder. And I'm moving from side to side with my breath. And we're going to just do what we can do today. Maybe even celebrate that a little bit. If you're coming to class today with maybe some fatigue or some mobility issues, right? Where our minds are, have the tendency to focus on the, what we can't do and the negative. So let's try to rewire ourselves and I'll throw you gold stars as often as possible. Taking one more on each side. All right, and then we'll 
stretch the arms out to the sides and maybe back behind you could lift the heart, arch the back a little bit. Here I am. Take a breath in. As you exhale, bring the arms in front, interlace the fingers and pull the arms away from the body a little bit. Shoulder blades sliding to the sides. You've got it. Inhale, open wide. Heart is lifting. Exhale, interlace. Pull the arms away. Let's do two more like that. Breathing in and out at your own pace. Getting that lubrication in the shoulders. Good. And then I will sit up and I'll press my palms away. Juice up my fingers. Right, however this works for you. And then I'm going to make a fist and roll my fists in an infinity or an eight lying on its side pattern. Breathing in, breathing out. And then we will just toss that away and move on to this right arm reaching out to the side. Lots and lots of space between the fingers as much as you can muster. And then we'll curl our fingers around that thumb and drop the knuckles down. This time, let's do it with a breath. Inhale, open, spread. Exhale, fist, knuckles down. Good, and one more like that. Beautiful, I'm gonna keep this right arm lifted and tilt my left ear to my left shoulder. Let that left shoulder relax. Why does it keep wanting to hike up by my ear? I'm gonna slowly circle, circle, circle. All of this space to the right side of me is my self-care space, my space in which I am healing today. That arm can move down a little, little bit at a time. And I'm optional hand on the hip or I could bring my arm behind my back. That's good. And I'll spin my chin down. I'm taking an easy breath in. Sighing it out the mouth, peeking at that left shoulder. One more breath. Relax. And then we're coming back and just taking a moment to notice the difference between my right side and my left side. I might shrug my right shoulder up, back, and down. Shrug my left shoulder up, back, and down. See how that feels. All right, and then we'll do all of that on the other side. So left arm lifting, lots and lots of space between the fingers, big breath in, and then make that fist around the thumb, drop the knuckles down, really good. Inhaling, I'm here in whatever state of being I'm in. Exhaling, breathing in, breathing out. Beautiful. Let's keep the palm lifted, tilting that right ear to the right shoulder. All of the space I'm circling on the left side is for my care, my own care, my self-care, as that arm moves ever downward. And then I'll gradually decide whether I want to rest my hand on my hip or bring the arm behind the back and spin my chin down, peeking at that right shoulder. Can you take a couple of breaths here, letting go of effort through both shoulders? Good, and then we're coming back to center and I'm gonna rub my hands together, infuse my hands with care and kindness for myself what a novel idea. And then we can take the hands and maybe take them to the neck or the shoulders or anywhere that your body, including the face, if that's your preference, is looking for a little bit of support today, a little tension relief. All 
good. Maybe you do want to move to the face. If you're wearing glasses, you could take the glasses off and just smooth out the brow. Maybe along the contour of the face. Maybe you're still on the neck and shoulders. That's great. If you have um, congestion in the sinuses, you could kind of pull the sides of the nose apart and that can kind of open up the sinuses. Maybe you want to get into just a really light temple circle or two. And anything else before we begin to move on? Do some whole body movements. Okay, so we've just been doing a little self-massage. If you had your glasses on, off, you can take them back on. I'm going to switch up my chair, grab a little sip of water. I'm doing some pre-hydrating for my flight to Seattle tomorrow. So I want to be nice and hydrated before I get on the plane. So you know when you get on the plane and your water bottle shrinks. Well, that happens in your body as well. I'm going to try to pump up my cells as much as possible. So whole body motion. I'm just going to walk in place. Opposite arm, opposite leg. And you guys will be so proud of my dad, who I got to do this motion the other day. I was like, Dad, what would happen if we treated you as a science experiment? Because he's having these low blood pressure issues. And you did this before you stood up. You could raise your blood pressure before you stood up. And I said, we'll do this for a few minutes. I'll set my timer. And he was like, okay. I was totally surprised by that answer. Okay. <laughs> and he did it. And, you know, I don't know that it really did much in that one moment. But over time, incorporating more exercise into his daily routine will hopefully ameliorate the situation. All right, just distracting you with banter while we walked there together. I'm going to bring a little extra space between my legs here as we do our torso circles. Moving in one direction could be a nice wide circle. It might be a small circle. Warming up my spine. Yes, if you're standing, you could do hip circles. That's good, Catherine. If you recall, in our Rami class, we did that for three minutes solid. And we will get to that, some of that, a little bit later. Coming back the other direction. You got it, Joanne. So nice to see you. All right. And then let's go ahead and try some side bending. Lifting the right arm up and over. Doesn't matter so much about the bend. Right? I might be more trying to actually reach up through my fingertips. Yeah, you've got it, Susan. Beautiful. Thinking of you on this one. And then we're coming back to center and left arm lift up and over, reaching for that area where the ceiling meets the wall. Maybe. Flowing from side to side with your breath. Your own pace, your own rhythm. One more on each side. Beautiful. And then I'm going to grab onto my chair, walk my feet in, walk my feet out. And I'm trying not to wobble from side to side too much so you can um, really feel the core working here, right? Adapting this. For you, if you would like to keep standing, you can, or this is pretty challenging and we're getting the hip flexors, giving the hip flexors a little strengthening. Find one or two more with your breath. And walking in, we'll stay walked in and I'm just going to stretch my right leg out as far as feels good to me, and I'll point and flex a few times. And then maybe I'll bring my right heel down onto the earth 
and I'll do some good old fashioned foot pumps. Foot pumps for peripheral neuropathy, trying to get that lower limb activated. And no, it's not going to change what's happening in the nerve, but it could help all of the surrounding tissues. And so that is what we can do, focusing on what we can do. And then switching up, we'll stretch the left leg out, maybe point and flex a few times and release that left heel onto the earth, pumping the foot down or pointing and flexing, focusing on what we can do. Maybe one more on each side or one more on this side, I should say. And we're walking that back. Okay, so let's take a moment to come into our seated mountain pose. I've got my feet on the earth, my seat in my chair, and I've got my arms at my sides. I'm going to inhale my arms out and up. And as I exhale, I'm going to bring my hands through to heart center. Maybe I even close my eyes, breathing in, arms rising out and up to whatever degree feels doable for you. You can change this up. Breathing in, breathing out. Reaching up and grabbing a little bit of peace and calm, a little bit of energy, vitality, whatever it is you're needing in this moment. I might take three more of these arm salutes. Bringing the hands down into the lap. And I'm going to just lean forward a little bit, nice flat back, and take a moment to make my lion's face. So I've got my my mouth wide open and my, stung, my tongue is sticking out and I'm going to take some little ha roars. Maybe one more. Beautiful. And then I'm going to come to what feels like a forward fold to me, being safe if I've got osteoporosis, osteopenia, or glaucoma, or vertigo, but I'm not gonna fold forward or round the back too aggressively. This might be where I stay, right? There might be a little farther to travel if you know you are cleared to do so, and I definitely don't wanna scare anybody out of folding forward. You can fold forward in a way that does not round the back, but it does put a little more pressure on the lower back. So up to you. And then I'm walking myself up and I'm grabbing on to my chair, the back of my chair. And I'll inhale, lift my heart, squeeze my shoulder blades like a cobra rising up out of the basket. My chest is exposed to the sun. Breathing into that. And then I'm going to let go and let my arms dangle, swing the arms. And then we'll move through some sun salutations, Surya Namaskar. Surya means sun and Namaskar means salutations. So we'll do a chair version of this. I'm going to sit at the edge of my chair. And this is a, a nice way to boost energy, right? So or you can do your own version, right? So I'm gonna inhale my arms out and up. As I exhale, I'm gonna fold forward to whatever degree is safe for me. Inhale, come up a little bit, nice flat back. I'm leaning forward and I'm gonna reach those arms straight out in front. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, sweep the arms behind you, grab onto the chair. Take a breath in, cobra heart. Exhale, reach forward, lean forward, very strong in the core. And inhale, arms, heart 
hands to heart center. So that's one of our sun salutations. Let's do two more. See if we can get into a little flow. Breathing in, arms rise. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, little lift. Exhale, reach forward, lean forward. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, sweep the arms behind you. Inhale, cobra heart lift. Exhale, strong reaching forward chair pose. Good, inhale, arms rise. Exhale, hands to heart center. Now you don't have to do the breath pace as I'm indicating. You can obviously breathe however you wanna breathe. But we're inhaling perhaps, the arms out and up, and folding forward. Inhale, little lift. Exhale, arms reach forward. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, cobra heart. Inhaling that cobra heart lift. Exhale, reach forward, lean forward so strong. You've got it, Carol. Last time, we'll inhale those arms up and we'll exhale hands to heart center. And just take a moment to thank yourself for creating the space for your own self-care. Now, if you are looking to stand up today and try a few standing poses, now is the time. We're only going to do a few things here. So do what you can. And if you're not standing today, that's totally fine too. If there's not an easy way to adapt something, you can envision doing it in your mind's eye instead. But I'll, get, I'll do my best to give you some options. So I've got my feet on the earth. I'm holding onto my chair. I'm rising up, lifting my, onto my tiptoes and coming back down. Um, inhaling, lifting, exhaling, sinking. Maybe I'm going to work towards lifting one or both arms, floating my way up. And I could switch which arm is holding on if I like. Beautiful. Breathing in and out at your own pace. Maybe you want to focus on something in the distance and notice your peripheral vision. What's below you? What's to the sides and what's above you? This whole space, occupying this whole space. Can you do three more with me? Tiptoe floats, either holding on or not. You got it, Pamela, beautiful. Silver sneakers is really paying off. All right. Let's take a little wider stance with the feet and I'm gonna circle those hips, circling the hips in one direction. And maybe the other direction. Okay, let's come into warrior one. So I've got my right foot forward and my left foot is back at a little bit of an angle. I'm gonna sink into my right knee, and if you've got knee issues, maybe it's not a really, really deep bend. So I'm holding onto my chair if I need it. I'm gonna squeeze that left glute muscle, so support your foundation, and then maybe one or both hands come to heart center. See if you can take three bountiful breaths here. Torso is upright. Chin is tucking. Beautiful. You got it. And then we're holding on to the chair and shortening the stance. You don't have to hold on to the chair if you don't want to. And I'm going to take a little forward fold here. So do what feels good to you, Sophie. I'm going to just pull my belly towards my spine. A little bit of core integration there. Hands can rest on the chair, or maybe they slide down the front of my leg, or maybe I have my hands interlaced behind my back for pyramid pose. And then we'll come up when you're ready, when you feel like you're ready to come out of it, and we'll switch it up left foot forward, right foot back at an angle, sinking into that left knee as deeply as feels safe for you. 
And we're squeezing that right glute, finding the foundation, and bringing those hands or hand to heart center. Softening the gaze. So I'm occupying this whole space with my breath. Good, we'll come out of it nice and slow, shortening the stance and taking that little dip forward, tucking the belly, tucking the chin, right? Maybe it's just a little bow with the hands on the hips. That's good. Lots of different ways you can do this pyramid pose. You've got it, Ginger. Tucking that chin, and then we're coming up, nice and slow, and maybe you want to march in place, either seated or standing, marching in place, breathing, getting into your rhythm, opposite arm, opposite leg, it's off to the races. And maybe I'd like to actually slow my walk down. As I slow my walk down, I'm balancing on one leg a little bit longer. And I might do a little freeze frame. Once I get to the top, that's awesome. All of that yoga is really paying off, right? We don't get the benefits from coming to class every once in a while. We get the benefits from doing our practice consistently. And balance is one of those things that we're really looking to hold on to, to maintain. I'm not talking about we're looking to, you know, do all the crazy yoga poses or, you know, linearly, linearly improve. What if the goal was to maintain? All right. I think that's quite enough of that. Very nice, guys. We'll do a standing balance. And then we'll actually um, start to warm down. Not that we really got too heated today, but um, yeah, let's do a little massage on the back before we do that. I'm gonna take my knuckles alongside my spine and I might be able to squeeze my elbows together a little bit, lift my heart so I'm leaning back a little bit, undoing the rounded posture and Good. And then we'll come to a little down dog, a version of a down dog using my chair. And then slowly make your way up. Now, option to go ahead and sit down if you're feeling like you're having a, a fatiguing kind of a day. If you would like to try a standing balance pose with me, uh, let's go ahead and start with the right leg. So the right leg is, we're going to have a soft little bend to that right knee. And we're just zipping up the legs and lifting that left leg up. Soft bend to the standing leg. See if you can disperse the effort right through the glute and the thigh and the calf. And I'm looking to finding my tipping point. I want to seek out that place where I fall out of it purposefully. And just imagine those gold stars raining down, surrounded by gold stars. Big breath. And then kick it out, kick out that right leg. Juice up that knee joint. All right, and then we're switching sides. Little bendy bounce. Weight will come into that left leg. And I'm zipping up the legs here and finding my edge. Where do I wobble? If it's not easy to find my edge, I might close my eyes. I might just explore closing my eyes with my hand on the chair and see what happens. You've got it. Hands can be wherever feels good. One more breath. All right. 
And then we're making any other movements the body's asking for. Maybe you came for a little more movement and you want to, we did a lot of fun stuff in our cardio flow class this Friday. Kind of a little bit of a grabbing onto what you need move. And then throwing away what you don't need move. Any other moves you got, you can go ahead and eventually meet me in a seated posture. Maybe I want to take a slow ride, slow elevator ride there. Okay, so some options here. We're going to be crossing the right ankle over the left knee, maybe. Another option would be to cross the ankle over the ankle. Um, and that might not actually do accomplish the same thing, but um, we will be perhaps massaging the bottom of that right foot or the right leg anywhere with, within touch, within range. And moving into a hip stretch. So reaching the heart forward, right? You can always reach out to me if you need adaptations of these poses, if these poses don't work for you. Sitting up nice and tall, across the knee over. And I'm using my core muscles, imagining that sort of corset of strength, and I'm twisting very, very gently to the right. It could be a tiny little twist. As I breathe in, I'm lifting through the crown of my head. As I breathe out, I'm twisting a little deeper. One more breath. And then flowing back and switching sides with that left ankle over the right knee or the ankle over the ankle, whatever feels doable to you. Or maybe there's another way you'd like to do this. Grabbing onto my left leg, my left foot. And gentle, gentle hip stretch here. I could reach forward with my heart, soften my shoulders. Take a couple of easy breaths. And then we're sitting up, crossing the knee over. Again, corset of strength, twisting to the left. Tall spine. Easy breaths. Good. Relaxing back to center and taking one more stretch. And then we'll close with a very short breath exercise. I love this exercise. I do this every day. It may or may not be for you, so we'll um, just sort of explore alternate nostril breathing. It's one of my favorites, and um, it's for sort of managing, maintaining equilibrium. It doesn't matter what you have going on. You might be super anxious, or you might be really low energy. This sort of evens everything out. So I'm going to be inhaling through my right nostril, exhaling through my left. Inhaling through my left, exhaling through my right. So there's this horseshoe pattern going on. And you can do, you can do whatever feels comfortable um, in terms of managing how the nostrils are opening and closing. And I will say that I'm not necessarily fully pressing my nostril shut. And I'm actually touching that place where I would if I were getting a nose ring, which I don't think I ever will do, that nose ring, that place where that would be, would be right there. That's where I'm touching. And I'm not closing all the way. So we can try this. Try closing the right nostril. And just gently inhaling and exhaling through the left nostril so that you can still fear, feel a little bit of airflow in and out of the closed nostril. I'm not forcing this. I'm not, you know, sucking it in or, or pushing it out. It's a very gentle practice. So that's the left side. You could try the right side. So I'm closing my left nostril. 
and sometimes this will make our noses run. <laughs> so inhaling and exhaling without fully compressing that left nostril. Inhaling and exhaling through the right. Maybe I can still feel a little bit of airflow coming in and out of the left. All right, and then I'm going to practice some rounds of this. It might feel comfortable to take the glasses off because you ha already have so much on the face and now you got the hands on the face, but it's totally up to you. So we're always going to start inhaling through the left and we're going to be ending exhaling through the left. So let's start by closing closing in quotations, closing the right nostril. Inhale left, close, exhale right. Inhale right, close, exhale left. Breathing in left, close, exhale right. Inhale right, close, exhale left. Anybody really stuffed up in uh, one side or the other? If you're really stuffed up, you can do a mental version of this where you're envisioning, and this is almost more advanced in some ways, but just a reminder, this is not only about clearing the, um, you know, the sinuses and clarify, that clarifying feeling you might get after it, but it's actually, Nadi Shodhana means the unblocking of the energy channel. So it's an energetic, practice that we're looking to move the energy. So let's give it another whirl. We'll do a couple more rounds. Just let yourself relax with this one. And if you don't get it right, if it doesn't feel right, just go to regular breathing. So we're starting by closing that right nostril. Inhale, left. Close, exhale, right. Inhale, right. Close, exhale, left. Going at your own pace, left in, right out, right in, left out. Maybe around on your own. And the next time you exhale from your left nostril, you can take the hands to the lap with the eyes maybe still closed. I'm going to take a few regular breaths here and just noticing what did that practice do for me? Any subtle effect from that short practice? And then if you would like, you can rub your hands together and cup the palms over the eyes. And give yourself lots and lots of gold stars for taking good care of yourself today. And when you're ready to open back up, you can release the hands, maybe to heart center, and we'll close our class with one Om and three Shantis. Shanti means peace in Sanskrit. So we're going to be sending out the waves of peace as far and wide as our energy will allow. So listening or joining in on your own end, breathing in. Om Shanti 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 And thanking you so much for your practice today, friends. Namaste. I will hope to see you soon.